Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we're going to be making this crayon resist elf and we're going to be using crayons or oil pastel and watercolor paints. To start the elf you want to take the page and this is a 9 by 24. Bring the bottom up to the top and I lightly just press right here and then I'm going to open it up. Now we're going to estimate um, the the middle here. This is our middle and then this is our top. So if we estimate where the middle of that is or you can fold down the top and press. That way you have that line as well. So if we just fold down the top and press we have a small line here. If we put our finger on that line here and that's actually one fourth down of the page, one quarter of the page, because we've got one, two, and then two on the bottom. And if we take our marker, and you want to have the cap on the back, and my finger is right on that fold here, I'm just going to draw around my finger, an end shape. Now above that, I'm going to estimate where I want my eyes to be. This is going to be the nose. I'm going to show you here what it looks like. Now for the eyes, you can design your eyes any way you like. I'm going to put them about here. So estimate with your fingers and decide where you want them. If you want them wider apart, higher up. But this is where I want mine to be. And so where my fingernails are is exactly where I'm going to draw my eyeballs. Or actually, I'm going to put the pupil in first. So I'm going to make a really small mark first. Remove my finger, put a dot. On this side, I'm going to remove my finger and put a dot. That way, if I have to adjust and move my dots, I'm not moving big lines. Actually, when I'm looking, this one's a little bit closer so I'm just going to make, when I draw in the pupil, I'm going to make it a little bit to the right. This one, I'm just going to go ahead and draw it in a little bit bigger. So that's the pupil, which is the center of our eyes. The next step for mine, and you can make your eyes any way you want. They can be just simple, plain ovals. Here, I made large black ovals, and then I put stickers on top. If you want to make it, let me show you on this Nutcracker version here, a circle with a curve on top, that's fine too. So you design your eyes. I am going to make them like this. So if you want to make one, some like this with straight lines at the bottom, you can go ahead and draw with me. I'm going to do a straight line on each side and then a simple rainbow arch. So this is more of a cartoon version of an eye shape. It's very simplified. And so then I just draw an arch around it. Now I'm going to put in some eyelashes. You may put these in or you may, um, you may just leave them blank. For the eyelash, just two on the edges. And one is curving out and up real small. And the other one's longer. So a small one and then a little bit longer one. The next step, we're going to put a mouth in underneath this. I'm going to do this simple version. If you want your mouth to be opened, go ahead and draw a line, and then you can do a U shape. Or start with your U shape first, and then draw a line across the top. So I'm going to make the simple version. So I'm going to find the very center, drop down a little bit, put a dot. And then I'm just going to simply make my V shape go up and my V shape go up on the other side. It's a simple V shape. On each side, I'm going to put a cheek. So I'm going to take my finger, skip over a space, and it's below the eye. See where the edge of the eye? And I'm going to draw around my finger, and then I lift up my finger. And then I'm going to go down and up like the letter U. I come on this side 
and do it carefully and slowly. If you notice how I'm doing it, I'm doing it carefully and slowly so that it comes out neat. I remove my finger and then I go down and up just slowly and carefully. So now we have the face. On each side here, I'm gonna draw a number one. So I'm gonna put a long one, starting where the eye, if I come across, end it with the cheek. Eye, end it with the cheek. Leave a little space here between the edge and the cheek. Next, I'm gonna come down with a curve, and I'm gonna go very slowly down with a curve halfway. Then I'm gonna kind of tilt it this way and do the same on this side. Curve and connect. The next step, I'm gonna find the center of my eyes and jump up a little bit and put a line right here. I'm gonna now make a line going down, curving down to reach here. Curving down to reach my number one. Next, we wanna add the gesture type elf hat. So I'm gonna go up and curve out. I'm curving up and out and I'm reaching toward the edge of my page. And now I'm gonna be making a zigzag line and I'm doing it very carefully. First, I'm gonna bring this down, but notice I do not touch the bottom here of this curve. So I'm bringing it down. And now we'll finish the zigzag up, back, up, back. Plan it first to see how much space you need. If you want them really wide, and have two of them, look, you don't wanna have lots of little up and down zigzags. The bigger it is, that's gonna be better. Here I only have two, and in this one I have one, two, three, four, four plus the two on the end. So it depends on how big you wanna make them. I'm gonna make it with two. So I'm gonna find my center, put a mark, now I want to go up and down, that way it's equal, okay? So I want to end here, so I find the center and I'm going to go up, so I'm going to go up to here. So this is how artists plan. Then I can connect up and down and I have it equally spaced. Up, down, now do the same on this side. Find the center, go up and that's where my point will end. And now I'm gonna go down and down. And now I have it equally spaced. We're gonna add the curling hat. And the hat has flipped over. This almost makes an S-shaped curve here. Gives nice movement. So you wanna find your corner and you wanna jump down two fingers Put a line. And then draw your circle. The circles is a little bit bigger than your fingertip. Now I'm going to have my hat start here. I'm planning it and thinking about it before I make my line. It's gonna come up to the top and just curve right around to the pom-pom. So I'm gonna start it here, curve it up to the top and right down to this hat brim or the, um, the edge of the hat, the decorative on the edge. Now we're gonna work on that S curve. It's gonna come up back around and down to the hat brim. So I start from my pom-pom up, curve around. It's kind of an N on its side. It's exactly the S. 
then curve it back down to the hat. So I've got some cute shape there. Now we're gonna do some el little elf ears and you can design these any way you want. If you want them curling out, if you want them just pointy up and in, if you want them rounded, I'm gonna come off my cheeks out and up off the cheek area here, match it on each side, out and up. And you wanna match how they line up to the face. So this is as far as the crown area or this top here, and that looks pretty much okay. Now I'm gonna, I might want mine a little bit taller and curving in a little bit more, I think. And then I can curve back. I'm gonna curve mine in and then curve back. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit of line on the inside. You can add a little hair design here. And this is where as an artist, you can design it any way you want to. Simple or elaborate. Let's see what we've got for hair over here. We just have some curves. These are almost zigzaggy with a curve coming out. And then I made this one like Hermie from the elf, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, he had this little curling hair here. I'm gonna add that, I think I'll do that here. I'm just gonna come down and back up. It's almost like a, a curve, the way you would make um, down and up like a J. And then I'm just gonna add little wavy lines here, just a little bit on each side. So he has a little bit of a curl sticking down the front. But again, you can design it the way you want yours. Now we're gonna add the collar to the elf. And you can do a curving collar if you just want a simple curve with curving lines, or you can do the zigzag collar like this one, where it's spiky. And so I'm gonna make mine spiky so to match my hat. I'm coming off of the head and I'm curving out toward the edge of my page. Both sides out toward the edge of the page. And then I'm gonna add, bring it back, bring it back, and then I'm gonna do up and down, up and down. Now right here is my halfway point. So for the halfway point, I'm gonna slide it up to the picture here so I can continue making the rest so you can see. For this, I'm gonna find the bottom of my page. And you wanna estimate from the bottom of your page to this point here. And you wanna find the center point. So you wanna find the center so we have some nice long legs and then we'll have the, the torso or the skirt or dress area. I'm gonna call this, see what he's wearing? It's a little costume. I'm gonna just call it a dress area. It could be a coat, okay? But I'm just gonna call it a dress for this purpose. I'm gonna find the center of my page now. And I went from the top of the, the bottom of the collar to the bottom of the page and I estimated halfway. Now I'm just gonna come out toward the edge of my page, down and out toward the edge of my page. Up here from the collar now, I'm gonna make some arms. Decide where you want your arms to end, okay? If you want him holding something in his hand or whatnot, I'm gonna have my arms end about four fingers up from the bottom, so I'm just gonna put a line. It's kind of a diagonal line. And I measure on this side four fingers. My arms are just gonna be down by my side. And now I'm gonna connect this, not at the end of my collar here, but right in here, and I'm gonna diagonal. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. 
Now when I'm bringing the arm up, I'm not going to touch it here. I'm going to stop about two fingers before the collar. So I'm just coming up leaving like an arm pit area. Leaving space on this side, I'm just bringing my arm up. Now I can go ahead and add my hand. And I'm just going to go, and you want it to be as long as the segment. If you see your knuckle here, okay, the segment between here is approximately an inch. So you want it to be as long as that, so you can measure. And the same on this side, down and back. Now the thumbs come in on the inside of the body. If you just, if you wanna add a thumb, you can. Down and up. And of course you can decorate this any way you want to. If you want to add some zigzag here on its edge, you can. The cuff. This little elf has some zigzag on its cuff. This little fairy has some too, right here. Oh my gosh. We've got some zigzag rickrack, it's called. This has got some rickrack on its head too, on its hat. So all of this decorative stuff you can always add later on how you want to decorate it. Now we're going to bring this up just to the hand and up to the hand. And now we're going to work on the legs down here. So for the legs, what I'm going to do is I'm coming down. And I want to come about three fingers. So find your center. Put one finger in the middle and two on each side. And I'm gonna put a slight mark where they meet the body. And that's where my legs are gonna come, gonna come out from. And they're gonna be long legs coming down and out. So I'm just gonna come down and I'm gonna stop three fingers from the bottom. Stop three fingers from the bottom on this side, come down. Notice they're slightly diagonal. They're not perfectly straight. If you make them straight, that's okay. You can even make them, it's kind of cute, look. One kind of kick in one way, or one straight and the other this way. So however you want to pose your elf, you can. That's up to you. Here's some just coming down. Well, they're slightly diagonal. Now we're gonna add a straight line over and a straight line over. My lines are going over toward the edge of the page and I'm going over approximately an inch. A little bit more than an inch. And then I'm gonna bring my legs straight back up and go slow when you make your lines. Straight up. The decorating of this is gonna be fun. Now, I do want to put in some of this really cute decorative uh, cuffs on the shoe. So I'm going to come down and out, down and out on each side. And then I'm going to continue my zigzag line. I always come back up, back in, and then I do a zigzag. Looks like the letter W. You could do that. Do a giant letter W and then just connect the W's. And now we're going to do the elf shoe. Ooh, I'm running out of room at the bottom here. For the elf shoe, I want to come diagonally down, over, and then I want to come up and around. I want this to be a curling elf shoe. So I'm coming down straight and over like a letter L, and then I'm gonna curve around. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, down and over. And if you're like me and ran out of room, don't worry. Just continue and have it go right off the page. And then if it, as it were to come around, it would curve around a little bit and I'd see a little bit of the shoe there. 
You can even draw packages and presents down at the bottom. And now the fun part. You can de decorate and design your elf any way you want to. You can put patterns on its legs, patterns in the skirt area, the rickrack and design up in here. Let's look at this one. He's got some cute stripes on his legs. The belt. You can place a belt on if you'd like. Let's look at some of these decorative fairy elves right here. They've got little jackets on. Stripes in the clothing. This one has a little bird. Here's rickrack and design on its hat. Here's design on its shoe. So if you even want to put some designs on the shoe, you can. And I think this one's similar. This one even has a little design on its hat. A little leaf and stem with the bell. Looks like some berries too. Some buttons. This one's very similar. So now you're gonna go ahead, design your elf, and then you can color it in with crayon or use paint, oil pastel. You can do a technique where you're using, um, if you color the pattern in with crayon, like say if I wanna do my stripes, I can color this in with crayon and push real hard, my stripes. And then the second color, I don't have to use crayon. I can just paint the whole thing after I've done all my stripes. I can do it with paint. And then what's gonna happen is, because I have the crayon pushed really hard, the paint will resist the crayon and will repel and pop right off. And then it'll give a cool texture, a real interesting texture. But first you have to color your pattern. So if you wanna draw pattern with the crayon, or if you're at home, you can use an oil pastel too. We're using beeswax crayons right now, so they're soft. And then the paint will repel and we're gonna use some of this um, watercolor paints on top, but let me show you what it looks like. Here I did an example with stripes. And so I painted the bright green with crayon, and then I just painted the green on top. And then it, re it resisted and left little tiny textures, which makes a really beautiful effect. The same thing with the jacket here. I painted, or I colored the spots first red, and then I wanted it to like make it look like a silk brocade, so I did red dots, and then I did red paint on top, and it created this interesting texture, which was really beautiful. And here, I colored very lightly with green, and then I put red on top, and I got that really beautiful resist texture. So we can use crayon for our pattern, and then the background of the pattern, we can paint right on top of, and it just repels it. And you can use colors that are complementary, which means very different, which is across from the color wheel, or you can use similar colors to create different effects that you'd like. I'm gonna use for this one, I'm gonna put some red on it so that I have a combination of red and the blue. And I'm just gonna show you and demonstrate how it resists. See how it pops off? By adding water to the color and then painting right on top. But you don't wanna scrub like this because then you may scrub off some of that wax. And you want the wax to stay on your paper so that the paint doesn't absorb into the paper. But that creates such a beautiful effect.
But what you wanna do first is color everything, all your patterns first with your crayon by pushing really hard and then add your paint when you're all done, all your crayon. And look at how lovely that is. That's a really cool texture. Let me show you that texture close up on that leg. So that's really interesting texture. So have fun designing your elf and think of some interesting, unique patterns for yours. I want to show you what it looks like when the pattern is designed and you're ready to paint. So this is what it looks like when you're all ready to paint. You have your whole face colored in. And so I colored my face in with crayons. I added detail to the eyes, the cheeks, and if you want to add a little bit of uh, value to the nose, you can as well. I put lines in the hair. That way I can paint on top and it will resist for the hair. I chose three main colors for my decorations, for the hat decorations and for the clothing decorations. The three colors I chose were turquoise, green, and red. Those were the main colors. Yellow is just an accent color. I continued with those three main colors throughout the elf. I decorated pattern on the shoes for buttons I finished decorating both legs to match. You want them to be the same for unity so that it all belongs to the same unit or the same elf. You don't want it to be different. That would not be unity. I repeated some of the patterns as well. The shirt has the same pattern as the hat. That helps with unity as well. I repeated these diagonal crisscrosses or cross hatches, and I repeated them on the belt. And then of course we have a lot of the stripes here repeating here. So this is what it looks like when you're ready to paint. Then you can go ahead and choose say two main colors for your painting. And the two colors that I'm gonna use for paint are gonna be red and green. So when I have red, pattern, that's where I'll paint the green. And if I have green pattern, that's where I'm going to paint the red. And I'll show you what it looks like once I've finished. And here is the finished elf. Most of it I did with complementary colors, the red and green. This was painted with red and then the hat at the top was painted with green. So it formed a nice resist. And then I used brown paint on top. I did not apply any liquid paint to the face at all. I just left it all natural crayon. And then let me show you up here what I did, or down here what I did. So basically the two colors I used were red and green, and then I did use some brown just for the hair as accent. But for my clothing, I kept it just two color families, red and green for my paint for complementary colors. And I like the overall effect. I, we've got a lot of really neat textures right in here. Now I'm gonna show you what my third graders did today. And this was with one class period, the third graders. So they're gonna take another class period and finish it. So this will take generally two class periods, but I'm gonna show you um, what they've done so far and then they'll finish them next week. I hope you enjoy the lesson.